Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that you and your family are doing well today. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. And I'm, I'm doing this very quick video because uh, several people have wondered. I've seen some of the comments online uh, in relation to the interview that I did with Phil Johnson. Uh, some are saying, well, why didn't you just interview John MacArthur? Why didn't you just go, you know, get it straight from the horse's mouth? Why didn't you interview John MacArthur? And, and a lot of people are thinking there's some a uh, nefarious reason that I did not interview John MacArthur and ask him about all of these things. Well, I'll tell you why I did not interview John MacArthur for this, because uh, he would never have agreed to do it. Uh, John MacArthur actually believes verses like Proverbs 27 two, let another praise you and not your own mouth. I, I knew that John would not want to defend himself. In fact, those who know him, and I've heard this from just about everybody who does know him, they, I've heard so many times, John is not one to defend himself when people accuse him of this or that or you know, teaching some kind of heresy like the Mark of the Beast thing that we, that we dealt with in the last interview. It's one of those internet legends that will, will never seem to die. But, um, but John MacArthur... Uh, is not one to defend himself, and so I, I knew that he was he would not do the interview. I knew that he would not go and uh, defend himself or talk about um, how generous he is, and I, I know that because so many people have have told me that um, John is not one to let his left hand know what his right hand is doing, and so um, I, I didn't I didn't even bother asking him to do this interview. Uh, he's he's not going to praise himself, and so I wanted to give someone else who know does know him very well, uh, give someone else, i.e., Phil Johnson, uh, the opportunity to do that. And just from a personal standpoint, uh, I want to give you just a, a couple of little stories of things that I have seen from John MacArthur and uh, some of the reasons why I have such deep appreciation for and admiration of. John MacArthur. Um, I have said before that I have traveled all around the world, and by God's grace, I have preached in 27 different countries, and uh, several of these countries multiple times, but 27 different ones. And I have yet to go anywhere where I do not see the good fruit being born by God's grace, by John MacArthur's ministry and that of uh, Grace Community Church and grace to you. Uh, just one little story. Back in 2013, I was in Uganda, and Uganda is one of the poorest countries uh, that I've that I've ever been to. I mean, it is. I've, I've seen a lot of poverty, grinding poverty, but uh, Uganda was uh, especially so. But um, anyway, I was there with a friend of mine, Mike Miller, who was on my board of directors. Uh, he's also a pastor in Oklahoma. Um, CPA is his tent making job, but Mike is a good friend of mine. And um, so Mike and I were in Uganda and we were there at the invitation of Pastor Bill Issa. Bill, uh, at the time when we met Bill, he was definitely not word of faith, but he was, uh, he was kind of like an open but cautious type guy and uh, more Armenian in his theology. But now he's, uh, he's, he's a cessationist and holds dearly to the doctrines of grace, just a wonderful brother in the Lord, uh, I think the world of Bill. But anyway, Bill invited us over and he kind of organized this uh, preaching tour of sorts uh, for right, up, right about two weeks through Uganda. And we, um, and one of our stops was in Kabuku Village, Kabuku Village in Uganda. And it was kind of uh, billed as a pastor's conference. And so there was right about 200 pastors that came, many of them walked, um, I was told, walked upwards of 20 miles uh, to come to this conference uh, because there, many of these folks are too poor to own any kind of car. In fact, the vast majority, I would say, of Ugandans don't own vehicles. There's, it's filled with these little motorcycles that are, they call them boda bodas. And, uh, and uh, anyway, they kind of, you kind of hitch rides on these boda bodas. Uh, so anyway, we're, we're in this little Kabuku village and uh, I needed to I needed to go use the facilities before the conference started, and and uh, in Uganda, more likely than not, there's not an actual 
bathroom that you and I would think of uh, here in the West. It was it's just a little you know you walk down this little trail and and there's just a little kind of a makeshift um, structure with a hole in the ground. That that's what they use, just a hole in the ground. And uh, so I was walking uh, <laughs> I was walking down this walkway, the path, and uh, and uh, walking towards it. And there was a, a gentleman, an older gentleman, walking towards me. And he was coming in for the conference, as I was about to find out. And uh, uh, he was in a, you know, in, I'm sure the nicest clothes that he had. And uh, we kind of met in the pathway there and uh, stopped and talked for just a minute. And he told me his name. And I honestly can't even remember what it was now. But um, just a delightful man told me that he was a pastor and uh his clothes were you know pretty 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 worn out uh but these folks are extremely extremely poor and i noticed that his shoes were all but falling apart and uh, but as we talked i happened to glance at what he was holding under his arm well, you, can, you know just holding under his arm and i looked and i noticed it was a john macarthur study bible John MacArthur Study Bible, way out here in the middle of nowhere, Uganda, Kabuku Village, and uh, and this precious brother is is holding a John MacArthur Study Bible, and uh, I mean, so that's just you know just one of hundreds of examples of of uh, things I could tell you about how I have seen God bear just some tremendously good fruit, so widespread. Several years ago, there was a, a young lady who emailed me from. Romania, I believe. It could have been Ukraine, but I think it was Romania. But anyway, she emailed me and told me that she had come across uh, John MacArthur's teaching on YouTube. And she started watching John MacArthur's preaching. And then I guess, you know, the way the, the video, the however their algorithms work up, uh, she noticed over there on the side that uh, there was a video by me. And so she clicked on it and started watching some of my stuff. And and uh, so she emailed me, and she told me that she had been genuinely converted in by listening to John MacArthur on YouTube or watching him on YouTube. And uh, so she then she started watching my stuff and went to my website and emailed me and, and told me her testimony. And, and God saved her out of some really, really bad stuff. Not that we're all not saved out of really, really bad stuff, but her testimony was quite quite dramatic and no one in her family is converted she has no christian friends at all and so here is this young lady who is a brand new believer who and i, I remember about her email she grieved over her sin i mean a true second corinthians 7 godly sorrow over sin and uh and so she emailed me and uh she she felt you know like alone what what do i do she has no christian friends she had no church uh, at the time no one to support her but she is a new believer and uh no books no no nothing i don't she didn't even have a bible and so uh, in a couple of few email exchanges with her i, I helped her as best i could and uh, when i realized that she didn't have a bible uh i emailed phil phil johnson and uh, i i told him about this young lady and i said hey phil um is there any way if, if I purchase this Bible and if I give you her mailing address, can you send her a Bible? I'll be happy to pay for it myself. And um, Phil Johnson emailed and back and he said, consider it done. And they sent her a Bible. Didn't charge me anything for it, even though I was more than willing to pay for it for her. Uh, they, they just sent it to her, uh, shipping and everything. So, um, and she received it. And so, I mean, it's just things like that, um, that, that I see all the time, uh, everywhere I go. For those of you who watched my interview with Phil, you might remember me saying that I've had a couple of opportunities, uh, very unscripted things to see John MacArthur's true humility come out. And I thought I would just go ahead and share that with you. And um, I've not talked with John. He has no idea I'm doing this and probably is probably not real pleased that I'm doing this. But uh, uh, a few years ago, I was teaching Sunday school for Phil, uh, Grace Life pulpit there, his Sunday school class. And uh, I was there with my wife, Kathy. And then Kathy and I had a mutual friend there with us, a, a lady named Frankie. 
Uh, now, Frankie, in fact, go to my YouTube channel. You might have to scroll down. It's one of the earlier videos I put on, but Frankie's testimony is on my YouTube channel. Uh, I would really encourage you to watch that. And uh, in fact, just do that. I'm going to put a link down in the description just so you don't miss it. I'm going to put a link. I, I would really love for you to go see Frankie's testimony. So anyway, uh, Frankie was there with us and Frankie's niece, a young lady named April. And uh, April at the time was 19 years old. So I guess now she's in her early 20s. But, but uh, April is not a Christian. April does not understand the gospel. She is not a believer, does not claim to be a believer, but she came to church with us uh, that Sunday, mainly just because her aunt Frankie was there and Frankie invited her to come, but but not a believer. And so uh, I taught Sunday school and I guess John heard that uh, Kathy and I were there. And so he invited us to come down, sit on the front row there in uh, for the worship service after Sunday school. And so after Sunday school was over, Kathy and I and Frankie and April went to the sanctuary, sat down on the front pew there. And um, so I'm on kind of like as the pew is facing the pulpit, I'm on the, the right and Kathy is next to me on my left. And then it's Frankie and then it's April. Okay. And uh, we got there before John came in. And so April had no idea where she was. The name John MacArthur meant absolutely nothing to April. She, Grace Community Church meant nothing to her at all. And so, uh, and she wouldn't have known who John MacArthur was if you'd have put a poster of him in front of her. So uh, we're all sitting there. And then shortly before the service starts, John walks in and he walks in from my left to the right. And so the first person to whom he comes is April. And he walks up to April, extends his hand to, to greet her. And he said, he said, good morning, what's your name? And she said, April, what's your name? Hi, April, I'm John. We're glad to have you here. We're delighted to have you here with us this morning. And uh, not a hint of surprise. Now think about this. You're John MacArthur, and you walk into the sanctuary of Grace Community Church on a Sunday morning, and they're sitting on the very front row. Uh, the first person to whom you come ask you, what's your name? Not a hint of surprise. It didn't faze him in the least. He was just as warm and gracious to that young lady as he possibly could have been. And so if it did surprise him on any level, you would never have known it, never have known it. And that made a big impact on me. I thought that's, that's pretty cool. That's real humility. So yes, dear ones, I am very grateful for John MacArthur. I make no apologies for that because I've seen the a very small part of the tremendous good fruit that has been born. This is a man who has faithfully pastored the same church now for 52 years, has preached through the entire New Testament verse by, by verse, has written, I don't even know how many books, 70, 80 books, an entire commentary set, systematic theology. Uh, there would be, now, of course, none of us, none of us is without pride. I mean, it, there is... There is pride that resides in each and every single one of us. That's just the reality of living in a fallen world. Uh, none of us will be completely free of pride this side of heaven, this side of our glorification. We won't. Uh, but if anyone had reason to really be prideful, uh, it, it would be John. And he's not. Uh, he's just, he's not a prideful man at all. He is, he is one of the more humble and gracious men that I've ever had the privilege of being around. And everyone who knows him says that very same thing about him. In fact, I was just last night was talking with Jeremiah Johnson and Jeremiah is telling me about how often John MacArthur goes to the hospital to visit people, uh, visit uh, members of his flock who are in the hospital. Uh, and he says, Jeremiah said that he loves doing that. It's, it's one of the things that brings him great joys to go and visit the, 
visit the saints who are sick in the hospital. It's just who he is. He's a real shepherd. He loves his flock. And he's a very generous person. Uh, that's something else that everyone who knows him has told me. He's a very, very generous man. So, uh, yeah, I, I knew that John MacArthur would not praise himself. And so um, I wanted to take an opportunity to let someone else do it. And maybe in this video, um, express just a little bit of my appreciation. So this is why I did not interview John MacArthur. All right. Thank you very much, dear ones. Until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you all.